we're kind of becoming creative cyborgs in the sense that we're using technology as an extension of ourselves, but we're also creating identities that are part human and part technology. That's what this video is going to be about. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So the topic I want to discuss in this video is who do you want to be or more precisely who do you want to turn yourself into using new technologies. Musicians have always tried to sort of create identities for themselves. So I guess since the second half of the 20th century when video technology became more of a bigger part of music promotion artists and labels would make a serious effort into sort of creating these artist personas. Um, so I'm not saying that musicians are necessarily fake or not themselves, but I guess it's more about curating an identity or uh, creating a version of yourself that's interesting and makes it easier to sell the music. Jessica Edlom says that in popular music brands, perceived authenticity is carefully planned as something that comes across as trustworthy, but also as a strategic tool in order to create relationships with the audience. Uh, and uh, Frith says that what matters is not whether the magic is real or not, but that people experience it. Richard Middleton wrote of the debris of authenticity in his book, Studying Popular Music. And Georgina Bourne and David Hassman Hauk declared that the subject has been consigned to the intellectual dust heap. Richard Peterson said that authenticity is fabricated. Uh, so what we can see is in general, authenticity is kind of perceptual. So as long as the magic is real, as long as what we're outputting is kind of convincing and tells an overall story that makes sense, uh, then it doesn't matter whether it's constructed or not. Also don't think that this is a principle that's ex exclusive to musicians, but actually everyone kind of does this. You know, we think about what to wear. Uh, what glasses suit me, you know, what, how do I want to cut my hair, um, how do I express myself towards others. I think as humans we're constantly thinking about who we are and, you know, how we might uh, present ourselves to the outside world, sometimes without even realising it. Not only are we exposed to so many different cultural domains, we also have technology that allows us to change who we are, or change our outward appearance, on social media, you have things like beauty filters. So for example, if I want to look like this, I can totally pretend that that's what I look like. And even beyond that, people choose their avatars in video games, in VR. Uh, people go to conventions where they dress up, where they sort of play roles. And it's super fun and really interesting. And I think uh, actually it goes to show that um, as humans, we enjoy trying on these different roles. If you look at VTubers, right, or um, just people that are using basically kind of anime characters to express themselves on camera, furries, or uh, I've heard of this thing called mer people. So it's people that kind of turn themselves into uh, mermaids or uh, mermen. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, so one thing that's super interesting is who people want to be in a kind of VR space or in video games is kind of culturally dependent. Um, they want to present themselves as themselves but as a kind of um as a kind of like stylized version maybe of themselves they want to be maybe different animals or, f or fruit there's that thing of like um to what extent do i want to be a version of what i look like now or to what extent do i go completely creative and actually scrap actually me being a human because i can't be anything right can be anything i choose to be but I think the uh, thing I want to kind of really focus on today in this video is uh, this idea of the creative cyborg. Uh, so what I mean by that is that we're sort of as humans interfacing with technology in order to create something kind of collaboratively with the AI or with, with this new tech. We're sort of working together to create a hybrid identity and the identity that we're creating as well is sort of partially us in our sort of um, birthday suit <laughs> while we were born, if you will, but partially is something that the technology has generated. And so I kind of recently made a music video where I wanted to play on that concept a little bit and uh, create a digital avatar to extend my own artistic identity, if you will. Uh, so that's not something new. A lot of artists have done that. So you've got the gorillas who are sort of full cartoon characters. Uh, you've got ABBA Voyage, uh, the four members of ABBA basically appear as projections, very, very convincing projections. I've watched it and it was very, very impressive. So 
they essentially look like their own younger selves on stage uh so they the band have um they kind of wear in order to create this show they've all put on sort of these motion capture suits and there's a lot of 3d technology involved um, that they've used in order to, to put on this show so um what's great about that is that they can sit at home and chill whilst we see them perform live on stage and then you've got this uh, japanese icon called hatsune miku who started off as a vocal synth and then they created this whole identity around her so she's like this imaginary blue haired um, girl who performs on stages as a hologram together with real life musicians they all try to create sort of a sense of purposeful artifice um, so this amazing technology that we're using in order to create an artistic output it's not just kind of silently there working in the background but it's very much a part of the identity that we show so i decided to go ahead and try this out for myself so i recently uh, wrote a song called bird caller and i produced it in logic my artistic identity i suppose as naoki is very much about video game aesthetics especially retro leaning video game aesthetics um so as part of my artist identity i guess uh, for this song um i created a bird character so this is my little bird character and it ties in with that um, sort of vision of hearing this artistic calling you know much like a migratory bird knows where to go so that's kind of the, the vision for that uh, but also i tried to make this character look like a little vinyl doll and I wanted to play with really making this character come alive as part of this music video and later on I would love to use this character also in live performances um, so I kind of wanted to control that character uh, with my own body so the way that I did that is um, I learned Blender 3D so Blender is a free graphics software so I created this character this bird caller in Blender um, uh, sort of modeled her, textured her uh, and then in order to be able to actually animate this character, I had to rig her. So rigging is when you put kind of like an armature like into, into a character. It's kind of much like a skeleton. So inside of this tool called Mixamo, which is actually also free, uh, you can auto rig a character. Mixamo also comes with these sort of like preset movements, which are really fun. Uh, so I used a bunch of those to sort of make my character dance. Um, but where the real juice came in, I guess, was uh, using Plask, um, which is an AI motion capture tool. So I was able to film myself dancing, as you can see here. Uh, and then I was able to upload that dance sequence into Plask, which is an AI tool that automatically reads the movement and applies it to a character. Uh, so again, I'm able to create this identity um, by working together with technology. Uh, so as part of the video i also made some backgrounds and blenders so you can see this like i guess isometric little floating island that i made so i created some trees and um all of that if people are interested i can make some blender tutorials maybe in the future where i go into a bit more detail uh, as to how i do these things but uh yeah so i made all that but then in the end i decided i wanted a few more backgrounds so at that point, I went back to AI again. So inside of Midjourney, which is a generative AI tool, uh, you can generate images based on text inputs. Really, I think of AI as kind of like an elaborate search engine, which goes through, um, you know, the, the thousands of years of existing human cultural capital, and it sifts through them for you, and it kind of reshuffles things and spits out a new thing kind of resembling those old things so it's very much a collaboration with the ai and um my video in the end has a bit of me and it has a bit of that created identity and it really got me to think because um it's such an amazing way to express identities um but at the same time i think it also changes identities going forward so it's not just like a passive contributor where uh, you know you kind of use the tools in order to make something that you've already thought about uh, but actually this technology i think will feed back into what identities we actually want to portray so it's kind of this back and forth um i suppose it that feeds into the area of technological determinism uh, so yeah technologies and identities i would love to hear your thoughts on this 
so if you have a minute, please write a comment down below and just let me know what you think. What, what are your thoughts on identities and technology? I would love to find out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more videos about this kind of thing, you know, uh, technology and creativity uh, in the sort of audiovisual space, uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, press the bell, you know the drill, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye!